What's up everyone, this is Justin from Make Supply and today we're going to be doing our saddle stitching tutorial. We will be stitching up this card holder using methods from this book, The Art of Hand Stitching Leather. The Art of Hand Sewing Leather, I'm sorry. Alright, let's get down to it. Okay, let's start with a little overview and uh, inventory of what we'll be using today. I'm holding this camera so I'm hoping this comes through alright. Okay, so up until now I built my card holder exactly the way I built it in my other tutorials. I used these templates that I printed out, traced it onto some three to four ounce Herman Oak veg tan, and right now I am at the, you know, I went through with the diamond chisels. This time I'm using the Tandy Pro line or a Tandy craft tool. I don't even know if that's Tandy. Three millimeter spacing. I think it's a little bit easier to see the stitching that we'll be doing. Okay, and this is where I am at now. I punched all the way through from the front. This is the front with the diamond chisel all the way around. Here's the front. Here's the back. Okay. And we'll be using, uh, this is from Royal Wood Thread. This is a waxed Irish linen. Um, I forget the exact size, but I'll find it before I post it onto the blog. Some stitching needles from Tandy. C.S. Osborne Scratch All, just for uh, you know random fixes. And we will be using the Art of Hand Sewing Leather by Al Stolman. So this is the book that you know, everyone suggests you get when you first start saddle stitching. There's a lot of good information in here and there's a lot of things that I think are a little bit outdated and that especially won't apply because we are using the diamond chisels. But while I'm stitching this, I am going to go through on the stitching steps and correspond them to what we are doing at that point. And I'm going to go through the exact way that they do it here, minus using the awl because we've already made our holes using the diamond chisel. All right, let's get set up. All right, let's get started. So I have our book, hand sewing leather. We have our piece ready to be stitched. We have our thread with needles ready to go. Take your piece, put it into your stitching horse or your pony, whatever you have, and we're ready to go front will be on the right side, the back on the left side. Alright, so let's find the page where we're going to start. Okay, so I actually I do thread my needle the way that they do in the book here. Um, it's a great method, works fine. I don't use this tying point where they tie two separate pieces together. I think it's weird. You don't need to do that. Um, all this stuff on page seven has been accounted for. Um, we did our groove. I used the eighth inch groove. Instead of an overstitch wheel, I used a diamond chisel. And instead of the awl, I punched my holes already. So we don't have to worry about this stuff too much, stabbing with the awl. Okay, so on page eight, uh, step I is where we'll start and that's just putting the thread into your first hole. So being that this is an open-ended piece I'm not going around and coming back to this point. I like to start one hole, so we have the first hole here, I like to start at the second hole and backstitch one and then come forward. Um, I just think you know it looks a little bit neater at the end, and you know this will be a stress point because you know it's, it's holding the whole thing together right here. So having a little extra support there isn't going to hurt. All right, so going with step I on page eight, stick your let uh, your needle through. Uh, I'm sure you can't see this off camera, but all I'm doing is making sure that it's even on both sides. My ne my needles match up you know, when I'm pulling them. You want a good, nice, even starting point on both sides. Okay? So, uh, like I said, I'm going to go back one 
and then come forward. Okay? And through the back. This is the only way the only time I'm gonna do this backward because I want a certain starting point. So left needle through, right needle to the front. You're gonna make a cross, but you're gonna come from the front. Grab it. My hands are really sweaty, it's super hot down here today. And pull through. So now you're holding it across and then you're gonna pull this up to get this, you know, so you're pulling the thread to the top of the diamond here. And then you're gonna take the one that's in your right hand, stick it through in the front, the closest to you, and then pull this through. Okay? So now you have gone back one stitch. So now we're going to go forward doing the method that is listed here. Okay. So, all right. Ignoring all the all parts. All right. So needle A, step six on page 10. You're going to put your needle from the left hand side into the first needle, into the first hole, I'm sorry. So actually this is going to be the hole you just left from. You know, so you're going back into the same the same one there. All right, needle into the hole. All right, step seven. You're gonna make you're gonna make the cross, except for this time, the needle in your right hand will be coming from the back. So this, okay, you got your needle in here. Your cross is gonna be made from the back. And you're gonna. Man, it's difficult today. Pull this through. Right. So now you have your cross. Okay. Now step where are we here? So step nine is the same thing. It's just pulling the needle a little bit further. Uh, step ten on page eleven is when you put your twisting needle A down. So I'll do that, and then step eleven you're pushing it through the hole. So this is what this step is. So you have your cross. I kind of like to pull this out of the way here a little bit so you don't snag the thread. Twisting down, taking the needle that was originally in your right hand and going back into the same hole. It's gonna go into, you know, you're pulling tight away from you and so it gives that space at the bottom of the diamond closest to you. And you're gonna push that through and pull out the other side. So now you're at this stage where you have a little bit of loop on both sides, and where that you know that goes through step 12, step 13, and so step 14, 15, <laughs> 16. I mean, pretty much the next two pages, pages 12 and 13, are all just about pulling this evenly. So this is another important step. You want to pull this nice and even away from you. And make sure, you know, you don't want one side, you don't want to start pulling with your right hand side and leaving your left with too much slack. You want this part to be, you know, as even as possible. So you pull even, and then once you get there, you pull it nice and snugly and uniform. You want uniform pressure each time. The thing with saddle stitching is it's all about consistency in the way you, you know, the way you're stitching your need with your needles, and it's also about consistency and your pressure. Uh, the more consistent you are, the more, you know, the more perfect your, your stitching will look. If you pull too tight and then the next couple stitches you pull too loose, you know, the stitch length will be a little bit different and it just doesn't look as good. Um, it, it comes into play a lot when you're using softer leathers like Chrome Excel or even just a regular Chrome Tan. Um, this stuff is a little bit more firm, so it doesn't, you know, it's a little bit better to practice on, but Okay, let's keep going. So we'll do the same thing again. Needle in from the left-hand side, from the back. Grab from the back, make your cross. Pull up, just to get it out of the way. You don't want to snag the thread when your needle's going through. It's a real pain. Um, so pull your thread out of the way, nice and tight. Turn over, take the needle from that was originally in your right hand, 
put it into the bottom of the diamond closest to you. Pull out the other side and then evenly pull and a nice snug pull at the end there. Okay. I don't know how good you can see this, but you know we, were, we got our first two stitches here. So I'm going to continue on. I'll probably do this side slowly and then kind of speed it up as I go through until I get to the end where I'll show you how I finish it off. All right. Left hand in, left needle in, cross from the back, pull out of the way, right hand needle in toward the bottom of the diamond, pull through, nice even tension. In, hold it up. Bottom of the diamond closest to you. Pull tight. As you can see, it's looking real nice here. All right, keep going. Left hand in, left needle in, I keep saying hand. Cross from the back, pull up out of the way. Over top into the bottom of the diamond closest to you. Pull. Into the back, cross. Over top to the bottom of the diamond. All right, we're just about at the corner here. Same thing to the corner, it's just at your end there. All right, made to the corner. So now we're ready to switch it over, but I'll just kind of give you a look at how what we're at so far. So that is our first side, looking pretty decent. All right, let's continue on. Again, the, the biggest, you know, like I said earlier, the biggest thing to nice, neat stitching is consistency. You have to do the same, the, the closer you can get to the same exact motion with the same exact tension every time is what will make it look uniform and neat. Like think about how uh, a sewing machine would do it. You know, the sewing machine has the same tension, the same length, everything, every time. And that's why it looks so nice. You need to try to replicate that, and it's tough at first. But then once you, you know, once you get a feel for it, you can do this quickly and efficient, and it looks great. If you snag your thread going through, you'll notice it when you try to pull out the other side. It'll start to pull. It'll make a little knot, but it'll start to pull the thread through in a weird way. And then once, as soon as you feel that you've done that, you have to stop and then pull it, pull it out, um, and start. You know, you might have to take your needle off and re-thread, but don't, don't try to force it. If it's not going through, just let it go, pull it back out, and start over with that hole. Same thing if you, you know, you're looking at your stitching and you see that you, maybe you did a cross, the wrong direction cross one time. You know, go back, just unstitch it, and fix that stitch and keep going.
And just another key to having really nice stitching is all the work you do before you get to the stitching point. So the better you can po like poke your holes, whether you're using the awl or the diamond chisels or pricking iron, whatever you're using, the more you know, the more uniform you can get your holes before you stitch. Obviously, the better it's going to look. You know, you could have the best technique stitching in the world, but you know, if you're you know, if, there, if it's not even, if the holes aren't even on both sides, it's never really going to look that good. Alright, home stretch. really not a whole lot to saddle stitching. Again, it's just consistency and practice. Just to reiterate, left hand needle through the back. Catch your cross from the back, pull through, pull your thread out of the way, right hand needle into the bottom of the diamond closest to you, pull through, even tension, pull. That's all I'm doing over and over again every single time. We're almost at the end here. Okay, so now that I'm almost at the end, um, I'll show you how I tie this off. It's very similar to how they do in the book, so maybe I will reference this again. Here. Okay. Alright, so as you're coming t towards the end here, you know, finish up, finish up the line. And so on the last hole, I like to do it a little bit backwards again, like like we did on the on the first one. So go in with the needle. You can kind of do this however you want, but I, I just like the way it looks doing it. So go in with your needle the same way. Pull out your backwards cross. So instead of going over top, I like to pull this forward and then take you know, don't do the turnover motion and just go back to the top of the diamond that is furthest from me. So the opposite of, you know, normally we would pull this back here, go into the bottom part of the diamond that's closest to me. This time I'm going to pull it forward and go into the top of the diamond that's farthest from me and just pull that through. And from there I'll do the exact same thing going backwards. So I'm at the end, going back to the second to the last hole. Go in with, so this is where you really have to worry about snagging the thread because it's, there's already thread in there so you really have to be careful when you're putting your needle through. That's why you know having the scratch all helps if you need to you know make this hole a little bit bigger. You can do that. Alright, and through the left, and I can see I'm about to snag the thread, so I'm going to kind of wiggle it. Alright, in through the left, backwards cross, pull through, pull towards me, back into the same top of that diamond farthest from me, and pull. Alright, and I'll usually do this twice, and then I'll finish both threads on this side. All right, so do one more. And from the left, 
don't snag any thread. Okay, I think I got through. Backwards cross, pull towards me, very tight, in through the hole. It's a little bit tougher. Alright. Cool. So at that point, I'm done back stitching. Um, I think just as in the book, let me see. Okay, so in the book they say, you know, you can cut off at this point, cut one off here and cut off here, and then you're good. Um, I kind of like to have the threads finish on the same side and always the back. So what I'll do is, you know, you backstitch twice, you're good. Take the one on the right hand side, so the, the thread that's coming out the front, and then just go into the next hole and pull it through. All right, so just so now both of them have finished on the back. All right, and at this point, I don't know how, where my camera's at here, so. Okay, so I just rotated this around. This is the back side. I'm gonna cut right up next to the edge here. I don't want a whole lot of slack. Okay, so I cut off the thread. Now this is finished on the backhand side. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pause the video so I can set up again over here on the table. And I'm gonna take my scratch off, put a little dab of glue on here, on both of these sides right here, and then push this thread right into there. And then that will be secure. So let's do that now. All right, I'm gonna to try to do this one-handed because I'm too lazy to set up the tripod. All right, so here is our finished up until this point. We still have to push the thread in, um, but I'll show a little bit of what we have. So this is the front. And this is the back. Okay, so as you can see up in the corner there, we still have those little pieces of thread hanging. Let's get rid of them. All right, so what I'm gonna do is put a little dab of glue on here, just a tiny bit. Grab a scratch all. Put a little bit of glue on your scratch all. If you don't wanna do this on your scratch all, you can get like a modeling tool or, or anything really. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of glue into that hole there. A little bit of glue, this is way harder with one hand than I thought it was gonna be. Okay. Just a little bit. Let's see if I can put this down. And then just push the remaining thread little ends into the hole. Okay. Did that. You can see. You can also, if you just want to burn them with a lighter, you can do that as well. Uh, I don't like to do that too much because, especially with the white thread, it leaves like a you know leaves a burn mark on the thread, so it just doesn't look very nice. And at this point, you can tap down your th uh, your stitches. So let me find something here. All right. done stitching uh, and you are ready to finish the rest of these edges here because if you know you're going the right way you've already finished these inside edges because you know they're a little impossible to get to once it's done like this so you are ready to do your edges and that will conclude the saddle stitching video uh, again leave any comments in the blog post or on the video that's fine too 
and I'll answer them as quick as I can. Thanks.